We have seen a definition for the determinant of a square matrix in a previous video. We now look at one important property of determinants. Let A and B be n by n matrices, as shown here. What we're going to do is, we'll give a sketch of the following result. If you take the product of the determinant of A and determinant of B, it is the same as the determinant of the product of A and B. Here I use C to denote the product of A and B. Let's first recall the definition of determinant. The determinant of A is defined as follows. You sum over all permutations sigma, coming from the set of permutations of 1 up to n, and each term in the sum is going to be minus 1 to the number of inversions of the permutation. And if you take the product of a1, sigma1, a2, sigma2, and so on, up to a n, sigma n. So in this definition, this sum is going to involve n factorial terms because they're exactly n factorial permutations over n symbols. We'll now work with the determinant of c and try to turn it into the product of determinant of a and determinant of b. First note that the ij entry of c is the following. So now, if we apply this definition of the determinant of c, each of these a's here will actually look like this. So each one is going to be a sum of n terms. Now, if you look at each term here for c, and expand the product, which of course involves n of these things, you'll get that all the terms look like the following. So each term is going to look like this. Here, k1 up to kn are elements from the set 1 up to n. Duplicates are allowed. So, so what that means is, if you expand each of these terms in the expression for the determinant of c, you end up with n to the n terms. So each term becomes n to the n terms, and each term looks like this. All right. Let's look at a 3 by 3 case to make this more concrete. So we'll look at the term in the determinant of c given by the following sigma. So there's one inversion here, and so the term will have a negative sign. And this term will consist of the product of these three elements. Now from the product of these three terms, you get 27 terms. 3 times 3 times 3. So I'm going to pick one of these 27, and I'm going to pick this times this times this. Alright, so the term that I'm looking at is going to be this. Now if we ignore this minus sign, there's actually another way to get this product, and it comes from the term that corresponds to the permutation given by this. So I'm looking at the term given by this times this times this, and the term is going to be given by this times this times this, which if you multiply out, you get a1, 2, b2, 3, and a2, 2, b2, 1, and a31, b12. So it's the same product except for the sign. And there are no other ways to obtain this same product. Now notice that these two terms cancel out, so they disappear. Now this is not a coincidence. And before we look at an explanation, let's just look at another more elaborate example. So this time I'm going to look at the term given by the corresponding to the permutation sigma given by this. So the term that correspond to this will involve the product of these three things. And I'm going to pick the following. So again, if you expand out the product, you get 27 terms. And one of them will be coming from this times this times this. Now the number of inversions here is 2, so it's going to be a positive term. And if I write down the product of those things circled in red, I get this. So a11, b12, a21, b13, a31, b11. Again, I can try to find out all possible ways to get this product. And in this case, you can get this product by looking inside the terms corresponding to all the permutations. 
So you end up with six ways to get this product. And half of them will have minus sign and half of them will have positive sign. So let's just do an example. So suppose I look at the identity permutation. How do I get this product? Well, you can take this times this times this. And you can check that if you multiply the thing circled in green, you would indeed get the same product. And since the permutation is the identity permutation, the number of inversions is zero. So that term is going to have a positive sign. So if you do that, you can find six ways of getting this product. And three of those ways will have a minus sign. Three of them will have a positive sign. So again, the terms will disappear if you simplify. So the key observation is the following. If some of these indices k1 up to kn are the same, then you can actually get the same product in different ways. And here's a statement that makes it more precise. So suppose you are looking at a product that comes from a term determined by this sigma. Now you can change this sigma to another permutation, sigma prime, in such a way that uh, sigma i1 up to sigma im is the same set as sigma prime i1 up to sigma prime im. And in the term that corresponds to sigma prime, you will be able to obtain the same product, except that the sign obviously depends on the number of inversions in sigma prime. If m is at least 2, half of these permutations will have an odd number of inversions, and the other half an even number of inversions. As a result, the only terms that are left after simplification is when all these indices, k1 up to kn, are distinct. And the possible values for these indices are 1 up to n. So you have n distinct values, and each of them is 1 up to n. Then they must form a permutation of 1 up to n. So what that means is, the determinant of c can be written as follows. So this is the same as before, whereas the ki's are now represented by a permutation sigma prime. So this is now the expression that we want to work with, and we will try to simplify this expression in the next video.